everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Expanse reaction and review video. Today I'm going to be watching, reviewing, and reacting to season 2, episode 11. Um, before I get into talking about a couple of issues I wanted to bring back from last time's video, just want to say a huge thank you quickly to everyone who has either come out to support me on Patreon or continued to do so. It's been one of the only comforting things during this whole time dealing with these copyright issues. Um, I'm still trying to work through those as you guys know. Interestingly enough, this company, Lasso, continues to basically claim all of my Expanse videos. Some of them they are just blocking entirely, immediately. Some they wait a couple days and then they block. And then some they haven't blocked at all but they have claimed and are claiming revenue from. So it's a little strange, and then I've had videos in the past where they've claimed them and I've disputed the claim and then they've recognized that their claim was false and they've released the dispute. So it's very, it's very odd, um, everything that's happening. But just again, I want to thank everybody who's supporting me, and if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon, um, I'll leave a link in the description below. Um, all the Expanse episodes will always be available there, both the shorter versions that are, are tried to be put up on YouTube, and then also extended versions with a higher tier. Um, so that's all there for you guys if you'd like. Um, so with that being said, I just wanted to talk about a couple of things that I didn't get into as much detail as I'd like um, at the end of episode 10 because I was feeling so crappy um, and my voice was not really, not really cooperating that day. But one of the big things that I wanted to focus on was the interesting dynamics that we're seeing between Amos and Prax. Um, so I thought that we got some more good context this episode about Amos's past and perhaps why he first kind of closed himself off and became the way that he is, and also why he seems to continuously be somewhat moved or motivated by anything that involves children or potential harm to children in some way. And that's, you know, why he seems to be drawn to helping Prax, because Prax is searching for his daughter. Um, and that's kind of the story that Amos is telling when he's trying to explain to Prax why it is justifiable to basically use a lot of violence on some people, why he feels some people deserve it or are bad people. And he tells the story about how some people you know, will prostitute and use women, and then they'll get them pregnant and they'll continue to prostitute them for people who have weird fetishes for that. And then when the child is born, um, they'll also use the child in various ways, sometimes even prostituting the child too. And so I think that pretty clearly is an indication that this is what happened to Amos. His mother was a prostitute, she was prostituted out, that's probably how he came to be conceived. And then he himself was prostituted as a child, which is horrific, but I suppose not shocking when you think about, you know, what has happened to him. Alex had that moment where he said, what happened to you? And Amos has this kind of expression of not really knowing what to say because something horrific has happened to him. Um, yeah, but, and Amos had also brought up when he was discussing Cortazar with Holden um, previously, had brought up the idea of, of pedophiles and how you can get them to talk about the things they've done by playing into what they, you know, are attracted to or drawn towards. Um, so he's obviously had a lot of experience with this. So all of that makes a lot of sense. Um, it really, it really does, it sheds a lot of light on how Amos came to be the way that he currently is. I think it sh sheds a lot of light on his outlook on people generally, where he has this perspective of there's people that need to be protected, there's people that are bad that need to basically be fought or taken care of, and then there's people that you follow, um, in the sense that obviously he comes from a place where he's gonna probably view himself, his mother, and various other people who've been prostituted as, as those who needed to be protected, but then he grew up into somebody who he sees as maybe kind of one of the bad people, but at the same time he doesn't want to be that, but he doesn't want to be someone that needs to be protected, but he also doesn't feel like he's capable of being someone that you should follow, so he's in this kind of weird place, divorced from any of these categories, 
but he fits everyone else into those. And it also kind of makes sense in every time you see him in various uh, instances where there's prostitution going on, he's very close with the prostitutes, it seems. He ended up staying um, in a brothel um, on Tycho, right? That he, That's where he was staying. And so he's had a lot of interactions with them. And, and it would make sense if, you know, he grew up in that environment. Um, yeah, but it it's incredibly sad, but it also really really puts a lot of pieces together and I think that um it also you know sheds light on the idea of you know him being separated from his mother whether that's because she was killed or he was like sold off or he had to run away from that situation I'm not sure I know a lot of you guys said that there's a novella about his backstory called The Churn and I'm gonna be ordering that and looking into reading it because I'd like to find out more about you know how he got away from everything and, and how he grew up and who he is. Um, but as I was saying, I also think that this really clarifies why it is every like kind of interaction that has to do with children in some way seems to draw out his protective instincts, seems to like push him into action, and why he was so kind of upset or impacted when that young kid yelled at him and said like, acted as though he was attacking the kid's mother. Because um, Amos maybe kind of recognized himself, almost certainly recognized himself as having been in that similar situation. Um, and that kind of put him into this emotional state where he was thinking about who he was, who he'd become, who he'd been, and everything. Um, and so that seems to be the fundamental reason that he has been so interested in Prax, why he's gone so far as to tell things to Prax that everyone else felt needed to be kept secret. Um, he feels that Prax has the right to know, and why he feels that Prax should be helped in searching for his daughter. And then I'm curious because Prax kind of gave that little talk um, to Amos where he was saying, you know, part of me was relieved at the idea that, that my daughter, that May, um, had died because I was never fully able to take care of her or, or protect her from her own illness. And, and Amos is like, what do you want me to say to that? You want me to say it's okay? And Prax says, no, I know it's not okay. But uh, I'm curious about Amos' thoughts about that generally because obviously that's not something that I imagine he was hoping to hear from Prax. But at the same time, they continued having, you know, good dialogue. And I, I think that hopefully Amos gets that Prax wasn't saying that he actually doesn't care about his daughter in any way, that it was more of a statement of, you know, this is how much I do care about my daughter, that it was painful for me to think about the pain that she was in and that I felt like I was failing as a father in not being able to fix that for her. Um, yeah. But then building off of that, um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about that, that discussion they had about the concept of the cascade. Um, I feel like that's going to perhaps be something that's more of a significant theme possibly over the course of the season, if not the show. It's obviously something that they're playing up on Ganymede, that um, this idea that the Cascade is, is starting, it's set in, and that they're not going to be able to reverse the damage that's done there. But I'm curious if it's something that will come up in terms of technology generally, in terms of the protomolecule and whatever this protomolecule thing is, um, where one, one thing starts to go wrong in this man-made system, um, or the way they've tried to use the technology, if that everything starts to go wrong or acts in unpredictable ways, if that's something that's going to be coming back to us um, throughout the course of the season. And I would guess that it is because it seems a lot of the time when they talk about technology in these ways that, that's, that they are really trying to instill that sort of deeper message. Um, and then they try to highlight it with an actual storyline as well. You know, they did that earlier in this season when they were talking about the um, the, uh, the drive, the Epstein drive, um, and then that kind of led into whatever this new protomolecule weapon was, a kind of um, lead up and foreshadowing into a discussion of that. So, and of course, arrows. So I, I imagine we're gonna get more of that too. Um, yeah, so, and that was, that was an interesting thing that Prax said, that whole story. He's actually contributing quite a lot to the storyline, I feel. I think that he's an interesting character that has, has um, shape the story in, in ways that I didn't necessarily expect, and I like the inclusion of him. Um, 
Yeah, so there was one other thing that I wanted to just briefly touch upon before getting into this next episode, and that was Aaron Wright. So I know um, people mentioned in the comments afterwards that maybe I was giving him a little bit too much credit, and it seems like I was, um, because you did remind me of the conversation he had with Jules Pierre Mao, where Jules Pierre Mao basically had said to him, oh, well, you know, if you're not willing to do what I want, there are other people out there that are interested. So he kind of threatened him with the idea that I can go to others. And maybe that was directly implying that he did have these relationships built with Mars, too. Um, so it's possible that Aaron Wright's fear here isn't some kind of just general concern for people of Earth and um, humanity generally and whatever's out there. Um, it isn't just a concern um, that has finally come after all of these things he's seen that has happened has built up and changed his perspective. Maybe it's actually just that he's concerned that, that Jules Pierre Mao actually did give technology to Mars and went behind his back and, and that he's losing whatever leverage or power he had. And, you know, maybe that does extend to Earth, like he's thinking of himself as gaining power for Earth versus Mars. That's possible. Um... But yeah, it definitely does seem like I overestimated him a little bit based on the things you guys were suggesting. I don't know, you continue to let me know what you think and maybe this episode will clarify a little bit more for me. But I'm also curious to see um, how Avasarala deals with this and what her thoughts are because it felt to me like her reaction was similar to mine and that she believed him or maybe believed he was sincere. I don't know. Hopefully not. If he's not sincere, hopefully she'll figure it out pretty quickly. But... But yeah. But all right, I think that's enough chatting. So without further ado, let's get into episode 11. Here we go. It's so messed up if he's doing some sort of experiment involving the children. Because just looking at this, it's obvious that she's really comfortable with him. So, so he would have had to like spend a lot of time getting these kids to trust him, and then he's gonna like use them. In a well suit street from the door down here. I know. Look, I know exactly how much time's passed. You need to be ready. You taste me. In case we don't find her, fuck you haven't lost a child. Yes, I have. My baby boy was taken from me, and I tried, and I tried to find him, and I failed. It took me a very long time to understand it wasn't my fault. Would you listen to anyone who was telling you what you're telling me now? Uh, well, I mean, I, I was right about that, but now I'm very curious. Like I said before, so we don't know like a ton of Naomi's backstory. And obviously there's rally, some very significant back stuff back that she has not divulged to Holden or any I mean maybe Amos goes? I don't told know. You, about the accident. About you did through this. Yeah, I will. One way or another. Mm. Uh, that doesn't sound good. Thanks for the heads up. I mean, it does seem like she at least hopes he's sincere. I want to know what really happened on Ganymede. And you're going to tell me. We're done here. Oh! What happened to my tail? Look at it. Firing squad for this. Are you testing a weapon on us? On your own soldiers? The whole generation has forgotten what it means to sacrifice for the dream of Mars. What killed my team? I did not see this coming. Team, we're a goddamn sales demo. Oh my god. Put it in 
slaughter your own people and then have the gall to tell her that she's not a real soldier. She knows this now. Like I said, it's a Fred Johnson moment. She's not just going to put up with what happened to the actual soldiers, the people, her team and the Earth team because some higher-ups want to, you know, play political games with crazy weapons that they don't even understand. Um, also, did she... Did, did he call that thing, that thing a hybrid, hybrid what? Proto-molecule and person? Silent as the night and smooth as silk. That's to say, girl, I think you're doing all the hard work. Save everybody's asses after. Oh. Switch the manual. I should have known. Test. Me and my team and your Marines too, we were caught in the middle. That test nearly triggered a system-wide war. The weapon's up for sale and Mars wants it. Badly. The peace talks, they were a delaying action to buy time. To complete the terms of the contract, I guess. Do you know who is involved? I took that off Captain Martins. He's in on it for sure. And I bet Minister Caution off is too. Get it to second right away. We need to know what's on it as soon as possible. Those boys will crank it like an egg. Are you up for a debriefing? We'll try to keep it short. This is a brave thing you have done today. We're all in your debt, Sergeant Draper. You don't have to call me Sergeant, ma'am. I'm not a soldier anymore. Mm. Just if where's that heart? You will meet with me, and we will come to an accommodation. These are my conditions, and they are non-negotiable. You immediately cease all punitive actions against my family. We meet in person, on a ship of my choosing. Outside you in control, you will come with a limited escort. Don't refuse this offer. This doesn't sound like a good idea. So, what do you think? Why do you pretend they care about my opinion? Indulge me. That's a fucking trap. Oh, mm -hmm. so predictable. And so are you. <laughs> You've already made up your mind, haven't you? Then take. She's gotta go. He's right. His crimes are public knowledge. Yeah, it's nothing to gain by killing. <laughs> Oh my 
my god. They released it on Eros uncontrolled to see what it would do. They did this for a purpose. The children are the hybrid. Because they have that whatever genetic condition. Are you help that kid in the incinerator? Or anyone on Eros? You expect us to hold him. What was it? You used to call a you on children. What were you doing here? I mean, yeah, she maybe deserves it, but she's not going to be able to tell you anything if she's dead. We may prolong you. To do what we wanted. We made it in our own end to get as many people off this station as we can before it dies. If we don't catch that thing out there, a lot more people will die. People die every day. I wanted to believe we could stop this. We can't. happened um whew. so there were some smaller things that I guess um were not necessarily that small but compared to the overall picture of the story seemed small and one example of that is gonna be Naomi just came out and said she does have a kid um so that was a correct guess that was a correct hypothesis and it does make a lot of things make sense but I'm also curious as to how this is going to tie into the decision she just made that instead of like going out and, and chasing after what exists of the protomolecule because now she believes they know that maybe there's actually a ton more out there that they don't know about. She wants to actually focus on helping individuals in specific situations. Um, so she's going to go back and try and help the, the lady who came in on the relief ship with them, whose husband ended up dying because of the people trying to come on board and steal from them, and uh, and then and then what? So then she's gonna just leave the crew? Is she gonna come back to the crew? What she what? Uh, I mean, I, I guess I sort of understand the point that she's making is that if she sees like Holden's on a futile quest, you know. He's Don Quixote and the Rossi is on a, fu a futile quest, um, then, then maybe she would rather go do something else that she thinks can actually impact individual lives in a positive way, but I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, at the same time, someone has to try and do something about <clears throat> these protomolecule things now that are running around out there and yeah it is something that maybe you need people on a like larger scale to be working on um overall but i, I mean i don't know and then there's also the case of praxis daughter still as yet to be found in whatever condition she's going to be in but um, and then also we see Amos again, kind of almost sacrificing himself to protect Prax in that situation, um, which, you know, that aligns with his philosophy of people you need to protect and also the idea that he wants to get Prax back with his daughter, so, but, but, yeah. And then I, I also liked the little touches of, um, the various moments with Alex, um, on the Rossi and 
talking to the Rossi and we, you know, he has a special relationship with that ship. But but also just in general, it was nice to kind of get to see him doing something um, himself that is integral to the success of the team. I don't think that, I feel like out of the team, Alex gets kind of the least amount of attention, but he actually obviously is very significant and I thought that everything they showed with him this episode was nice touches. And then, of course, we have Holden, again, continuing down this seeming path of, of embracing the idea of the ends justifies the means, even if that means, you know, committing violent acts or doing things that maybe he in the past would have felt to be disgusting, like letting that one scientist woman basically bleed out um, in order to try and get information out of her. I also think that was a little impractical because, yeah, she can't really give you more information if she's dead, but nonetheless, maybe she wouldn't have given them information anyway. I don't know. Um, and they did get a little bit of, of info out of her, so... But yeah, it's it's strange to watch Holden kind of sit there staring someone down as they're bleeding to death and just being like, well, you kind of deserve it, which seemed to be the attitude he was taking. I can't really blame him, though. I mean, it does seem like they kind of deserve it. At least that's my point of view. But it's just interesting and kind of weird to see Holden um, acting in this way. And it's not a total shock. You know, they've been gradually building up to this, I feel like. But still, I don't know. I don't know. And I wonder if maybe that sort of also kind of plays into Naomi's decision here as she's kind of been seeming really unhappy with with seeing this this change in Holden. So um be curious to see where that goes going forward too. And so let's get to like the biggest the big things of the episode then. One obviously um Bobby making the decision to beat the shit out of her superior the truth and when she learns the truth when she learns that Avasarala was correct that it was at least faction within the Martian government actively kind of funding this with Jules Pierre Mao and then and then choosing to experiment on their own soldiers as well as UN Marines um, and that leading to all this conflict when she finds out all of that then she runs, literally runs, um, across the Martian UN line to try and get political asylum and then tells Avasarala everything she knows, um, which is obviously a significant thing and I think kind of, Bobby over the last handful of episodes must have be going through so much like emotional turmoil in trying to deal with everything that she had believed in and felt to be true and necessary kind of falling apart from her encounters with people on the streets of Earth and realizing that all the things she's been told about people on Earth is not really fair, accurate, or stereotypical in the same way people on, on Earth are told stereotypical things about Martians um, and, and seeing the conditions that a lot of people live in. Um, from that to finding out that her, her own people are responsible for the death of her team and that they're willing to throw Travis under the bus for political purposes, that they're willing to even kill their own people for, for what they see as a political gain in, in getting some sort of weapon, that they're willing to put aside the dangers of the protomolecule in order to acquire that technology for themselves. Uh, and how, I mean, it's clearly thrown everything up in the air for her and she's gonna be losing her very sense of identity both as as a strong um dedicated martian soldier and just as a soldier in general you know she's not not a marine anymore she's saying you don't have to call me sergeant um and part of that probably comes down from her you know even thinking despite the fact that everything that she's done is probably is right I imagine she probably does feel some sense of shame and guilt in the idea that, you know, she didn't follow orders, she attacked a superior, she abandoned Mars, so to speak, in a way, even though she didn't really, because honestly, this is going to be more helpful for Martian people overall, I would imagine, that they're not being lied to and manipulated by factions in their own government, but nonetheless, she probably feels sort of like, you know, like she failed as a soldier and that she's doing something kind of traitorous and so I imagine she's going through a huge amount of emotional and mental turmoil at this point 
I'll be curious to see how her character continues to develop going forward, but I, I felt like they've done a really interesting job with her over the past few episodes. You know, they brought her in early in the season and, and they would kept going back to her and her team with little flashes. So I knew that eventually they were going to be building up to something. Um, but they've really kicked it up into Top Gear over the last few episodes. Done a really great job and I, I feel like I've become pretty invested in her um, in the short amount of time. And I'm very curious to see what happens with her going forward and with her and Ava Sarala, what they're going to do. Um, and speaking of Ava Sarala, she's probably walking into a trap with Jules Pierre Mao, but she feels like it's the right thing to do, so I guess we're gonna see what happens with that next. She's going up into space, I guess. She's gonna meet on some ship. And then the other kind of big revelation from this episode is that what the Martians are actually doing is using the protomolecule, experimenting on these children, these children who have some sort of condition, genetic condition that I guess must make them more suitable for experimentation, um, experimenting on them to try and create these hybrids and what that thing was that attacked Bobby's team was one of those hybrids that they were testing out as a weapon. They want to turn it, turn these kids with the protomolecule into like a thing, a, a weapon that they can control. So that's what she's saying, the, the doctor or scientist was saying as she was dying that, you know, we have a way that a protomolecule, but we shape it to what we want it to be and learn how to control it. And apparently what they want to control it and turn it into is, is a weapon to destroy, which is not surprising, but disgusting. And they're willing to sacrifice these children, turn them into these things, um, and sacrifice a whole bunch of people in a supposed demonstration and perhaps lead up to a war in order to get what they want, which shouldn't be surprised given everything that we saw on Eros and Dresden, and you wonder if that scientist lady and all of the other doctors have had a similar procedure to what uh, Cortazar had done so that they, they can feel acceptable going through those processes, I don't know. But, I mean, that was, that was a pretty horrific and shocking revelation, and now you're just kind of left wondering, so is May one of these things now? Like, are they going to find her, and is she going to be one of these things? They're going to have to try and destroy her? Or uh, how do you even destroy her? If you come into contact with one of, one of these things, does it have a normal protomolecule effect on you? Or, I mean, something else entirely? I feel like there's a lot of open-ended questions, and basically now Holden and Alex and, and Prax are going to be just walking into some situation that they don't really know anything about. Not, not too unusual, but one that is potentially very dangerous with this thing that's out there. So yeah, it kind of left us in, in a bit of a crazy place. Um, with all the characters and storylines, but but it was a really good episode and like I said There's all those things are things that I'm curious to see how they develop going forward and I'm, I'm looking forward to it I'm looking forward to the last couple episodes of the season see what they what they bring to us But all right guys, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here um, If you have any questions or comments for me, please do leave them down below and if you have any thoughts on any of the things that I've been saying um, I'll be curious to hear your thoughts as well. So I'll just say thank you very much for joining me and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye.